Shalom and welcome once again to Treasures of the Torah. I am Pastor Matt McEwen, Moray Matan, and we are in a new book of the Torah. We're in a new Sefer. We're in Sefer Shemot, the book of Exodus. Now, the word Shemot is the plural of the word Shem, which means name. And so in Hebrew, this book is called Names. And that is because in Exodus 1.1, it says, now these are the names of the sons of Israel. Now, something that is interesting to me is a phrase that we get in this verse. These are the names of the sons of Israel, every man with his household. Let's talk about that for a moment. Once again, I'm in this collection of commentaries this year called Wellspring of Torah. And this particular comment in this collection of commentaries comes from a commentary called Hadarash Vehalyun. And let me read this to us. Every man came with his household. As a rule, when people move from a little village whose inhabitants are imbued with Torah and the fear of God into a big city, where irreligion and immorality are rampant, they may remain unchanged, having been raised in the ways of Judaism from childhood. Their children, however, will take to the ways of the city and cast off their religion. The Torah makes it a point to tell us that this did not happen with the children of our patriarch Jacob. They had departed Canaan, where they had led a pious and godly life, and they had settled in the impure and godless land of Egypt. Yet they remained every man with his household. Their home life did not change, and the children remained close to the ways of their fathers and mothers. This is such a wonderful comment and a testimony to the life of the children of Israel. It is sad that this comment says that by and large, the second generation of a family that moves into a non-religious pagan area will depart from their faith. What a terrible thought. God forbid that that would happen to our families. But by and large, this is what happens a lot of the time. Sometimes that faith is not their own. We must make sure as parents that the faith of our fathers and mothers becomes our faith and that it becomes the faith of our children's father and mother that we pass that faith down, that it doesn't just become a way of life, a culture, that that it becomes truly the faith, truly the, the thing that sustains our particular families. This has got to be the case with us. We've got to to let that light shine. We have got to keep the fire burning, so to speak, with regard to our faith. You know, it used to be that whatever the faith of the head of the household was, that was the faith of the rest of the house. That was the faith of the wife and children. And this is borne out in the Brit Hadashah in the New Testament in Acts chapter 16. When the jailer at the Philippian jail, when Paul and Silas are singing praises to God and an earthquake happens and their chains are broken, they don't escape. They stay put. And when the guard is going to harm himself because he thinks that the prisoners have escaped and that his life is forfeit anyway, they tell him, don't harm yourself with the sword. We are all here. This comes as wonderful news to this jailer who kneels at the feet of Paul and Silas and asks them, what must I do to be saved? And what do they say? They say that he needs to put his trust in Yeshua the Messiah and he will be saved. Him and his household. You see, the head of household used to be just that, the head of the house. What he did was what the rest of the people in the house did. This isn't always the case today. But back in these days, when the family was a bit more traditional, this is the way things were done. This is certainly the way that it is laid down in Scripture for it to happen, for the husband to be the head of the household. And these are scriptural truths that we stand by today, even though modern society has departed from them. If you are the husband in the family, are you the man of the house? Are you the head of the household? Are you the priest of the home? These are questions that we must ask ourselves. If you make a decision, does the rest of the family follow you? Are you a leader in that capacity? If you are not the head of the household, if you are the wife or a child in the household, are you following the godly example 
of the head of the household? Do you have a godly example to follow? Well, if not, you need to be an encouragement to that head of household that he take up the mantle of responsibility of being the godly man in that house. And men, if you are not acting in that role of priest of your home and being the head of household, you need to step up. You need to take your biblical responsibility of being the head of the household. Now, does that mean that you lord over everyone? No, of course not. But you lead by example, and you lead by being a servant leader, as our Messiah Yeshua did when he washed the feet of his apostles. This is something that we must keep in mind, that our faith stays the same whether we are in a small, isolated village or whether we enter a big city that has lots of ungodly influences in it. Whether you are a young person and you're at school, whether you are an adult in the workplace, or whether you're retired and you are out and about in the community, you need to make sure that the faith that you have at home is still the faith that you have when you are out in public, out in the marketplace. That is a mark of true faith that the faith is exactly the same, the expression is exactly the same when you are in a small, isolated area or whether you are around people that disagree with you. I pray that this message has been a blessing to you. If you'd like to study where I study at Yeshivat Shuvu, you can go to shuvu.tv and fill out an application there. Shabbat Shalom to all of you. We wish you the peace on this Shabbat. God bless.